Hi guys, in this video we're going to take a look at, again, reactions of alkenes. Uh, and we're going to be adding HX, so we're going to be doing an unsymmetrical addition of HX. But this time we're going to be looking at the addition to an unsymmetric alkene. So the starting material is not going to be uh, a symmetric carbon-carbon double bond. And to do this, we're going to be discussing Markovnikov's rule. Um, Markovnikov was a Russian chemist back in the late 1800s that did a whole series of reactions and came up with sort of a predictive tool uh, to assess what might happen when you add these types of reagents, HX, to a carbon-carbon double bond. All right, so the bottom line is the following. We're going to start out with a carbon-carbon double bond that uh, is not symmetric. So notice that this carbon has two hydrogens that would be coming off of it this carbon would have a carbon substituent and one hydrogen. Okay, so this carbon is definitely different than this one. So when we add HX, an HX type reagent to this, it turns out that um, there is actually a preferred product that you would get. So when you do this reaction, you do actually get two products. We could add the H and the X in the following way, uh, where the X group adds here. And I'll just go ahead and draw out all the hydrogens here. So let me just go ahead and put in the fact that I've got two hydrogens there, one hydrogen here. And I'm just going to go ahead and circle the HX group uh, that we've added. So notice in this case, I put the X group on carbon 2 uh, of 1-butene. So this is 1-butene. So in this case, we would now have a two-substituted butane, uh, butane molecule, whatever the X group would define what we would name that. But we also could potentially get a product where we could flip-flop this. The X group could add to this carbon. So instead, we could have a hydrogen here, and our X group add down here. So now I've got X and H there. Notice now that's a one-substituted butane molecule. Now what Markovnikov found, and what has uh, become known as Markovnikov's rule, when you do this type of reaction with an HX type reagent, invariably, now there are, well I shouldn't say invariably, there's always going to be maybe some exceptions to the rule, but almost always this type of product would be the major product. Okay, whereas the, the, uh, the substituted, um, the one substituted butane in this one would be the minor product. So let's take a look at what's actually uh, happening here. So the X group is adding to what's called the more substituted carbon of the double bond. Okay, and that's ultimately what Markovnikov's rule could be stated as. So the X group adds to more substituted carbon of the double bond. So if we were evaluating our molecule 1-butene here uh, as a starting material, looking at the two carbons, carbon 1 versus carbon 2, we're going to count up the number of carbon substituents off of each. So off of carbon 1, there's only one other carbon group attached. It's the rest of the chain. So this would be a, uh, a primary or a mono-substituted carbon-carbon um, double bond. Okay, this one here, notice now, it's got a carbon substituent coming over here and another carbon. So this actually has two carbon substituents on it. So carbon-2 would be identified as the more substituted carbon. So when we're adding HX, the X component is going to get added to that position. Okay, so in this, in this particular example, it would be carbon-2 and the hydrogen would add to the less substituted position. Now, notice I've said major and minor. Um, unless you actually went into the laboratory and performed a reaction on a specific molecule, you wouldn't necessarily know what the percentages of these might be. But in general, you might get something 70% to 30%, sometimes even as high as 95% to 5%. But again, that would be dictated by the specific HX molecule and the specific um, compound that you were going to be reacting. So in the next part of the video, we're going to take a look at some examples of using some of these HX reagents and see if we can use Markovnikov's rule to predict uh, the appropriate uh, major product. 
All right, let's take a look at a, uh, a molecule that we're going to have to apply Markovnikov's rule to uh, if we want to try and ascertain what the major product uh, might be when we're adding HX to an unsymmetric alkene. So before we start, let's just go ahead and name this compound. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this would be 2-methyl. 2-hexene. So that's our starting material. Notice there is no cis and trans here uh, because the two methyl groups are equivalent. I can't have a trans or a cis relative to this longer chain over here. So just 2-methyl, two 2-hexene two would be the, the compound name for this one. So if I were to add HX, and let's actually do a real, um, a real reagent. So if I were to add HCl to this, could we predict the major product applying Markovnikov's rule now again, remember in Markovnikov's rule, we just have to remember that the X group, in this case chlorine, is going to add to the more substituted carbon of the double bond. So looking at this uh, alkene, which carbon has more uh, substituents attached to it? So if we look at carbon 2, it has 1, 2, 3 carbons attached. So that's a tri-substituted carbon, whereas carbon 3 only has 1 and 2. So the X group, when we add this, should add to carbon 2. So let's draw out what the major product should, in fact, look like. And I'll go ahead and just put in the fact that I've got 1H there. So I've added HCl across the double bond. Notice the double bond is now removed. And if I now had to name this compound, okay, um, you can see I've now got a chlorine substituted at the 2 position, and then I have a methyl coming off of the 2 position. So this would be 2-chloro, two 2-methyl, two and then hexane. Now notice in the name, I've changed from being a hexene, which is a carbon-carbon double bond containing compound, to an alkane, and in this case an, uh, um, the hexane molecule. So when you're approaching problems like this, they could be phrased in a number of different ways. Um, I might ask you, you know, to draw the structure of the major product, or possibly provide the name of the product. Or another common way to do a question like this is to actually work backwards. So if I give you uh, this as the major product, I could ask, what was the original starting uh, alkene? So let's take a look at one more example where we're going to use Markovnikov's rule. And this time we're going to do that uh, the water addition uh, or the hydration reaction where our HX reagent is HOH or water. So to do this, let's uh, start with an unsymmetric alkene. Let's look at 1-methyl cyclohexene. So if I added our HX reagent, and this time I was going to use water, and an H plus catalyst. Remember that water could be rewritten as HOH. So in this case, the OH group would be our X group. So applying Markovnikov's rule, looking at this compound, if we had to choose between carbons one and two, which one was more substituted? Hopefully you can recognize carbon one is the more substituted carbon. It's got one, two, three substituents coming off of it, whereas carbon two only has one two substituents. So when we add our X group, it should add, at least predominantly, to carbon number one. So the product we would get would be this. Now, just for clarity, I'll go ahead and put in this hydrogen here just to show the fact that we are adding water across this double bond, H and OH. So this is a very, very important reaction, uh, not only in organic chemistry, but also um, biochemistry. It's a way to convert an alkene into an alcohol. And that process is called hydration. So just like if you were to drink some water, well, essentially the alkene is drinking water. It's essentially absorbing it, becoming hydrated to become an alcohol. So now we've seen another example where, again, adding an HX type reagent to a non-symmetric alkene, so one that doesn't have the same uh, types of carbons on it, um, is going to, the X group is typically going to add to the more substituted uh, carbon of the double bond. In this particular example, we would have a potential minor product that would flip-flop the H and the OH, 
But again, most of the times when we ask questions or think about this, we're usually going to be focusing on what is going to be the major product. So I hope that helps in terms of explaining Markovnikov's rule. Good luck with some more of your problems.